Hey friends, this is one of our sunset talks. I've done these with you, but I've never had you up here with me. I have been up here for sunsets, but not for oh, yeah. this sort of thing. They're beautiful up here on the ridge. We get to watch the sun rise mm. and then the sunset. And boy, we feel just really fortunate. It's really magical. To be able to have that. So tonight, I'd like to share it with you. And we thought we'd talk about worry. Oh, I thought you were going to say something peaceful and calming, <laughs> like the setting sun. It's how to achieve that peace <laughs> okay, and calm okay. if you're afflicted with worry. <laughs> oh, all right, well, that's good. <laughs> what about worry? We're going to draw on the wisdom of Dale Carnegie. He wrote a couple of books, and we're reading one of them right now. And if he was standing here with us, he would be the first to say, oh, Canton and Rebecca, that's not my wisdom. This is wisdom from ancient Greeks and from people that he met and was inspired by. Mm. He tended to be a very, just, what's that word? A humble man that didn't take a lot of credit for much of anything. But he had a great way of taking people's wisdom and distilling it into something that was very digestible for you know, people like us who I'm a bear of very little brain and it takes me a long time to get anything. <laughs> Can I bring up this video whenever I need to remind you? Oh, oh look right here. Oh. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> I did say it. <laughs> what I like is that it, it is really digestible. It's a very simple and easy approach. And he's just, as you've said, distilled it from a whole bunch of different people who've come across pretty much the same discoveries a lot of them on their own, sometimes simultaneously, of ways to deal with worry. And if you look around today, it's probably not actually that different than it was a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago. We can always think in this culture, oh, it's so awful now, but you're good way back and Socrates is complaining about the youth of today and all the different problems of the world. And so I think stress, worry, has probably been with us since pretty much forever. And so what's neat is that these things are just, his system is just very simple and elegant. And the first thing that he points out is worry is not very good for us. And it's very true. Our body has been split apart, I feel like, by the uh, modern medical system. But really our emotions and our physicality, that it's all one. I mean, our emotions and our body are structured together so that we have things that happen to us and they happen physically and emotionally. So naturally, worry is a huge cause for all sorts of physical things that we have going on. Oh, it's, I've always thought of stress as as bad as smoking a couple packs a day. If we're under that chronic stress, you know, acute stress is different. That's maybe even good for us. So we're gonna get a flyby to disturb our perfect tranquility. Oh. Well, ah. now I'm really worried. What if it takes a long time? Ah. What if we can't even do this video? <laughs> so, you know, that's an example of just how easily things can disrupt our internal state if we don't develop a foundation. And he saw that simple wisdom. If we have to have a foundation, a way that we can interpret these externals so that they don't own us and control our being. As you said, it's so true. We suffer from some existential threats today, right? I mean, we can list a lot of things that are wrong in our world, but every generation, every era tends to think that theirs is the end and is when everything is falling apart and going to pot, as they used to say. Just like this video is shot, this <laughs> darn plane. This is my inner peace trying to battle the anger of that plane. That pilot, you, you're ruining our YouTube video. As if that's the most important thing there ever was. <laughs> so I guess the question is, let's just cut to the chase here. What do we do? You want to give his formula? Yeah, I want to give his formula. Just cut straight I'll just, it. I'll just lay it out, right? You're going to state what is the worst case scenario? So, 
Let's use a real life example. Uh, An airplane flies overhead during your very peaceful YouTube video. Okay. Well, okay. I mean, but that's not. <laughs> yeah, but, no, no, that's wrong with that. Okay, What's okay, wrong okay, with that? okay, okay. It's but very. You know, I mean, cheap, I'm but. thinking like, oh, you know, I have, you know, a horrible business that thing that's fallen through and. Yeah, yeah. There's you can <laughs> we could use a a more serious example, but in that example, I can then think, well, should we even do this video? You know, it would have been bird song in this beautiful. This is a gorgeous sunset that we're mm. getting, and a great talk with me being more eloquent than I've ever been <laughs> in my life. <laughs> oh and my gosh. Then it's ruined by this plane. Should we just scrap the whole video? So what's the worst that's going to happen? We're going to do this whole video. We're going to get back and none of it's going to be usable. None of it's going to be usable and, or even and, worse. We'll put it out there and nobody will watch it except for a couple people that give it thumbs down and horrible <laughs> comments. Okay. That could be bad. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, pretend that there's a deadline and we have to have a video, a sunset talk by tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. We're just maybe not it gonna... could destroy our whole YouTube channel. You know what? We are we are definitely going tangential here. <laughs> I like to actually, when I think of the worst thing that could happen, sometimes I play it up. But there's also usefulness in just thinking of the most realistic negative thing that you can. Yeah. And then what you want to do, the step two, is to is that the step two or is mm -hmm. that step one and a half? <laughs> I'm not sure what you're gonna say. So <laughs> is to fully accept that that negative and say okay this is this is it this is this is horrible my business is and falling I'm, apart. I'm gonna it. have to declare bankruptcy i'm gonna have to find a new job i'm gonna sell my house so yeah step two the acceptance part is super important because you cannot free yourself until you accept yeah it could be that bad and you want to really accept it and say okay i'm imagining that my business is destroyed i'm filing bankruptcy and once you let go into that reality that you've created in your mind, that full negative, then the thing you're fearing has kind of already happened because our brain has a fair amount of trouble distinguishing between a fantasy that we create mm -hmm. and a reality that we experience. So the negative now is taken care of. You've already experienced it. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Isn't there some Zen poet who says something similar to the whinny of a pack horse unloaded of everything? Yeah, that's just an old Zen saying. Yeah. Oh. So there's this freedom if you can really accept it. That's like, okay, so that's it. And then the third step is how can you improve on the worst? So that's going to be the worst that's going to happen to you. Well, how can you start improving on that? You know, maybe you have in the book, there's this person who has this terrible stomach ulcer. They've got two weeks to live. They say, okay, I guess I got two weeks to live. You know what? If I only have two weeks to live, I'm getting on a cruise. Yeah. And I'm going to go see the world. And what happened? They relaxed because really it was mostly caused by stress. And by the time they got back, pfft. they're feeling a lot better. So that third step, it allows us to take a problem that before, here was the problem, and we were applying so much worry to that problem that we're not able to think of solutions. See how this works? I'm totally distracted. Hi, friends! <laughs> <laughs> Some friends, neighbors coming up to watch the sunset as well. It's a popular show here. <laughs> so now I can take all that energy that was worry, and I can take that and I can apply it to actual strategies that could solve this problem or mitigate this problem or at least make it a little bit better than the worst case scenario. Well, and from the stories that we've been reading, it's really fun because almost always what happens is that when people do the acceptance of the worst that could possibly be, there's something that clicks over and they begin to see things differently. And suddenly they can, instead of going down that path of worry, 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 where you just kind of build a rut, I can only see the same thing over and over. You go, oh, well, but I could just do this. And then that could work. And you never saw it before because you were too worried about it. <laughs> so give this a try, my friends. 
Tell us what you think. And what do you do for worry and stress? I mean, obviously there's wonderful things like meditation, getting enough sleep, getting food, getting exercise. But do you have any tips or tricks for dealing with worry, helping that anxiety monster to go away, and helping yourself to find a clear path forward? Love to have you share. Talk with us in the comments. And so much love to you all. Yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed this sunset with us. Yeah. Pretty beautiful, huh? Can you see anything else? Wow. Oh, look at that. Can you see that? Mm. How the sunlight is shooting up. Wow. Okay. All right. Love to you all. Yeah.